Mega Man Legends 3. It was a game that fans had been requesting for over 10 years. The previous title in the Legends series, Mega Man Legends 2, had unfortunately ended on a cliffhanger, with Mega Man ending up stuck on a satellite called Elysium. In addition, Yuna, a key character in the game, made mention to a mysterious Elder System that was becoming active again. What was this Elder System exactly? Well, it's difficult to say for sure, but from what Yuna described, it sounded rather foreboding. She stated that there were remnants of this system buried all over Terra and the underground ruins. While she doubted that they'd be fully active soon, she hinted that something terrible was in store for the people of Terra if nothing was done and the Elders and their machines activated. Unfortunately, the game ended on this note, leaving a lot of questions unanswered for well over a decade. Anyway, I wonder how Mega Man's doing. Huh. We have to get this thing working so we can go get him. But lo and behold, at the Nintendo Conference 2010 in Japan, Capcom's Keiji Inafune announced that Mega Man Legends 3 was finally going to enter development. And as if that didn't sound good enough, he also announced that the fans would be directly involved in its production. Capcom opened up a forum on their website known as the Dev Room, where fans were allowed to submit all a manner of ideas for this sequel. Contests for Bon Mecha designs, Reaverbot ideas, NPC personalities, Easter egg concepts, and more were held, and the winners were going to get their ideas implemented into Legends 3. In addition, the dev team routinely updated with concept art and work-in-progress screenshots to show the headway they were making with the game. In a time before Kickstarter was all the rage, this news was basically just too good for fans to believe. The Japanese and English dev rooms together accumulated over 4,600 members in the first 13 days, which the team was reportedly extremely impressed with. Kohei Ozaki, the planning director, even went so far as to say, This is an unprecedented situation, not only at Capcom, but in the history of the world. I'd stake my life on it. It really is quite impressive though when you think about it, adding up all our creative powers. It's nearly unfathomable. The Dev Room events were also incredibly popular, bringing in hundreds and sometimes even thousands of submissions from fans all over the world. The hype was astronomical, and fans were super pleased to have the chance to participate in the creation of this highly anticipated title. Events soon took an uneasy turn, however. On October 29th, exactly one month after the game was announced, Keiji Inafune reported that after 23 years of working at Capcom, he was finally leaving the company. This news came as quite a blow to a lot of fans. Many people suspected that the only reason Legends 3 got the go-ahead in the first place was because of Inafune's work. Inafune had always stated that Legends was his favorite Mega Man series. It was always sort of his pet project, and in the years following Legends 2's release, he'd frequently asserted that he'd like to return to it someday. He was very passionate about Legends 3, both before and after it was announced. As a result, many began to feel that his departure from Capcom would negatively affect the entire Legends 3 project. Though some fans were beginning to fear the worst at this point, the developers of the game took measures to reassure everyone that they were still determined to see the project through. On November 2nd, they stated in a dev room post, We realize that events of the past few days have given many of you great cause for concern, and we apologize for taking so long to get back to you. We have been reading all of your comments from the past few days, many of them expressions of anxiety and many of encouragement. Honestly, though many of us are still a little dazed and confused about all this, the can-do fire inside us is still burning as hot as ever. Not only will the dev team continue on with the Legends 3 project, we will push forward even harder than before to complete Mega Man Legends 3. And just like up until now, we hope that you will continue to help the Legends 3 project grow. Together, let's make the best Mega Man Legends ever! Though Capcom certainly tried their best to prevent concern and the dev room was still very active, it was hard to feel that something wasn't going wrong behind the scenes. On February 15, 2011, director Iguchi published a post called A Declaration of Resolve, in which he expressed disappointment that the dev team was not being as open with their fans as they should be. This will not do, he stated, for a team trying to put together an unprecedented project, we're being far too soft-spoken. If we don't have an edge, if we don't have guts, if we don't have any thrill, then we've got no chance of reaching our target number of members. 
The target number of members was 10,000, and the dev team hoped to reach this goal before March 31st. At the beginning of February, the Japanese and English dev rooms had over 8,700 members together. Iguchi went further to say that his executive didn't have much confidence in the dev team's ability to create a sample build for Legends 3. These disturbing bits of news only set the stage for a more worrisome revelation, however. In this post, Director Raguchi also happened to mention that a greenlight meeting for the project would be taking place a week later. He stated, at Capcom, you have to spend the first few months of a project creating a sample build, then show it to various people and await their approval. We've been working away, trying to get that sample as good as we can, and now is a crucial time for us. This was the first that anybody in the dev room had ever heard about the project not having been fully approved. Ever since Legends 3 was announced five months before, Capcom had not mentioned anything about the fact that it wasn't greenlit. As a result, many fans became very confused upon hearing about this meeting. Since it was mentioned in a relatively casual manner, some wrote it off as simply a business formality. Others, however, took it as a harbinger of uneasy times to come. The Greenlight meeting took place on February 22nd between Iguchi and a couple officials of Capcom. The game reportedly wasn't approved, but the staff was fortunate enough to receive an extension for the Legends 3 project's trial period. The development team took advantage of this opportunity to revamp and improve their team's structure. Ten days later, on March 4, Capcom announced plans to host a special Nintendo 3DS event called Nintendo Cross Capcom Premium Demonstration Event. The purpose of this event was to give fans the chance to go hands-on with Capcom's latest 3DS projects. Fans were going to be able to experience Mega Man Legends 3 for the first time at this event via a special demo build of the game. This was quite a big deal, as ever since Mega Man Legends 3 was announced, Capcom had shown no gameplay footage from the title whatsoever. However, catastrophic circumstances were soon to ruin these plans. On March 11, just a little over a week after this announcement was made, the destructive Tohoku earthquake struck Japan. With a magnitude of 9.0, this was the most powerful earthquake to have ever hit Japan. And worldwide, it was the fourth largest earthquake on record since modern record keeping began in the year 1900. It caused devastating tsunami waves that reached heights of up to 133 feet in some areas. While the Legends 3 team reported that they didn't feel the effects of this earthquake in Osaka, where their HQ was located, it ravaged a large portion of Japan. In light of this disaster, the team was forced to call off a number of events that they had in the works, including the 3DS hands-on event in Akihabara, where Mega Man Legends 3 was going to be publicly playable for the first time. They also decided in a March 15 update to take a break from posting Legends 3 dev room updates for a while. About three weeks later, on April 9th, producer Kitabayashi officially announced the recommencement of Mega Man Legends 3 dev room updates. From there, things slowly started returning to normal. Indeed, the dev team seemed to have a renewed energy. Then, on April 21, the big news hit. The dev team announced the Mega Man Legends 3 prototype version, a playable prologue of the full game that would contain ten exclusive missions, and essentially build things up for the plot of the full game. The story revolved around a new cast of characters, the roughhousing Skybiker Barrett, his partner Arrow, whose design was chosen by members of the dev room, and their biker gang, the Bright Bats. Sometime down the line, they were to meet Roland the Bonds, and help them in their efforts to bring Mega Man down from Elysium. The game was scheduled to be a launch title on the Nintendo 3DS eShop, costing about $2-$3. to $3. Capcom planned to use this prologue as an interest gauge for the full product, to quote director Raguchi exactly, the heat and excitement surrounding this downloadable title would determine whether or not the full game could be greenlit. If hype is strong, the full title will be a go. If not, it's a no-go. I don't even want to think about that outcome. Initially, the fan reception towards this announcement was rather mixed. While most were extremely excited to hear that a playable build of Legends 3 was going to become available, there were also a number of fans that didn't like the prospect of paying for what they saw as basically a demo. It wasn't exactly true to say that the prototype was a demo, as it contained content that would not be found in the full game, but many had a problem with this practice just the same. In general, though, Legends fans were thrilled that they finally knew what they had to do to save Legends 3. Many went out and bought a 3DS immediately upon hearing this news, just so they could download this title and show their support for the project. Many others planned to buy a 3DS just to play it. 
Fans were going all out, as they knew that if this prologue didn't sell well on the eShop, that was the end of their dream. Legends 3 wouldn't happen. And the fans weren't the only ones going all out to ensure the success of this prologue. The developers were equally as active in the dev room. During this period of time, the dev room was at the peak of its life. The developers were releasing a load of screenshots and gameplay videos from the prototype in order to sell consumers on the product. Director Aguchi and producer Kitabayashi put together a five minute long gameplay video that featured Barrett fighting Reaver bots and riding on his signature motor horse. They showed off three different missions from the game on a Nico Nico Live broadcast that spanned over 16 minutes. And a boss fight with the fan designed Bond mecha Donner Wells was showcased on the Capcom Games guest show. Based on all the high quality prototype footage that Capcom was releasing, it certainly looked like the title was coming for a time. <laughs> Time passed. The 3DS eShop launched, but the Mega Man Legends 3 prototype was nowhere to be seen. It had been delayed, according to producer Kitabayashi, to create a product of the highest quality. Now, it seemed reasonable that Capcom wanted this to be a high-quality game, as it was going to heavily influence whether Legends 3 would be greenlit. But fans were puzzled as to why Capcom didn't at least provide another time frame for the prototype's release, especially since they only had so much time before their trial period expired. More time passed. A new release date didn't appear, but things didn't seem that wrong for a while. The dev room was still as active as it ever was. The team rolled out a new contest to design a mascot for the Bright Bats biker gang. They released art of Mega Man and Roll's final suit designs in the game, and they also put out a couple new screenshots. As time went by, though, development updates gradually began to slow down. The Dev Room blog was still updated daily by the web planner Kinako Ikawa, but over time, these updates slowly became more focused on interviews with the developers, trivia, and other miscellaneous subjects, rather than Legends 3's development. Fans soon began to read between the lines. There was a sense of foreboding in the air that many just couldn't shake. Noticing that the project was losing steam, Mega Man fan sites Rockman Corner, The Mega Man Network, and Legend Station joined forces to put together a support campaign to boost the morale of the Legends 3 developers. The idea of the campaign was to send encouraging messages to the representatives of Capcom to show them how many fans were still eagerly anticipating the game. These efforts were short-lived, however, as the following day would bring the news that the fanbase had been dreading. On July 18th, a date that Legends fans would remember forever, Capcom unceremoniously announced the cancellation of Mega Man Legends 3, along with a playable prologue. Their reason? Lack of criteria. As for the Dev Room Contest winners, Capcom compensated them with a Servbot thank you sketch from the dev team and a Servbot mobile cleaner, since the winners' designs and ideas would no longer be used in the game. Fans were devastated. Many took to spamming Capcom Unity with angry messages, even on blog posts that had nothing to do with Mega Man. Others took more rational approaches, creating petitions to try to get the game revived. The announcement was so abrupt and vague that some fans couldn't even believe the news at first. It took thousands of Mega Man fans by surprise. Questions were everywhere. What happened to Capcom's promise that the prototype was going to act as an interest gauge for the full game? Most knew that there was a possibility that the full game would be cancelled, but it seemed certain, if anything, that the prototype would be released. If the prototype was at least given a chance to shine on the eShop, and the full game was cancelled afterwards due to lack of prototype sales, the situation may have been easier to accept for a lot of fans. Such a scenario would have still been disappointing, of course, but at least fans would have been able to rest with the certainty that they tried their best to get the game to sell. Now, however, things were in utter turmoil because many felt that Capcom didn't even give the game a chance. This was only the beginning of the fan backlash, though. In a day's time, the anger would skyrocket to insurmountable heights. On July 19th, a fan by the name of DK Lance reached out to Capcom Europe via Twitter in an effort to discover the exact reason for Legends 3's cancellation. After all, the only official explanation that Capcom ever gave for the decision was lack of criteria. Capcom Europe replied with the following comment, Unfortunately, so few fans took part in the creation of the game. It was felt that the project was not worthwhile. 
The representative went further to say the next day, It's a shame that fans didn't want to get more involved. If we saw there was an audience for MML3, people might change minds. Needless to say, this series of responses triggered a backlash of catastrophic proportions. From most people's perspectives, Capcom was essentially blaming their fans for Legends 3's cancellation. Apparently, it was because not enough folks participated in the dev room that Capcom opted to scrap the game. This notion was shocking, especially in light of the fact that six months before, Capcom had stated in their dev room recruitment video that it was perfectly okay for fans to just hang back and watch the project from afar. The only time when the company made any sort of push for more members was back on February 1st, when on their Rocket Progress page, they exhorted fans to help the dev room obtain 10,000 members by March 31st. This was a task that the fans accomplished a full month before the deadline, which appeared to contradict Capcom Europe's assertion that not enough people were interested in the dev room. A day later, Capcom Europe apologized for their previous remark on Twitter, and explained that their original comment was meant simply as a lamentation that the dev room didn't achieve its goal as a marketing tool. They went further to clarify that the fans were not, in fact, responsible for Legends 3's cancellation, stating, Because we create something and not all fans like it equals Capcom's fault, not the fans. In due time, Capcom USA's former dev room liaison, Greg Moore, stepped forward to shed even more light on the controversy, and confirmed that fans had nothing to do with the game getting scrapped. In an Ask Capcom forum post, he stated, As the composer of that tweet eventually tried to explain, the remark was intended to be a lament that the dev room didn't achieve its aims as a marketing tool, not that the fans of the game were somehow responsible for the cancellation of the game. In any case, it obviously didn't come out that way, and the backpedaling was evidently too little too late. Incidentally, the dev room was never meant to serve as a primary gauge of marketability or whatever. We knew this was hardcore stuff, but it bears mentioning that the pan-western dev room was US-led, and Europe's involvement was secondary, so I would chalk that sentiment up to that one individual's misconception of the project, or else just poor wording. To be as clear as possible, Capcom does not keep blaming the fans. One person made a brief series of poorly worded tweets once and was then removed from Twitter. The company, including the European branches, has since undergone a massive upgrading of its community initiatives, and now the UK office has both multiple designated community managers, led up by the lovable Neil, and a social media expert. So I'll just come out and say it, you can go ahead and discredit those glaring two-year-old tweets. The official company message regarding the cancellation is here. My follow-up message is here. It's not your fault. Fans would continue to become perplexed by other events, however. An interview with Chris Hoffman, the only journalist who have ever played the prototype, revealed in September that the game was, for all intents and purposes, complete. He stated, If it were up to me, I would have wanted to make it available to at least get some sort of return on the investment that had been made so far, and to allow the contributors to see their creations come to life and to judge what consumer interest was in the project as a whole. This added a whole new level of confusion to what was already an incredibly confusing situation. If the prototype was complete, what harm would Capcom have befallen by releasing it? Even to this day, this probably stands as the biggest question regarding Legends 3's cancellation. It was also speculated that, if the Mega Man Legends 3 prototype was released back in June according to Capcom's initial plan, it would have potentially had a five-month monopoly on Nintendo eShop sales as the only 3DS exclusive game on the service. Until as late as November, all other games on the eShop were either ports or apps. These entailed a number of DSi titles, the phone game Let's Golf 3D, and Pokédex 3D. The first genuine 3DS exclusive title to release on the eShop was Freaky Forms, Your Creations Alive, which released on November 10, 2011. This further made the cancellation of the prototype seem to fans like a very illogical business decision. Fans were only certain about one thing. They wanted this game back. While the cancellation of Legends 3 was indeed devastating, it had one large positive effect. It brought the fanbase together on such a level that had never been seen before in the Mega Man community. Fans from all over the world were uniting towards one common goal, the revival of this long-awaited title. They began to arrange convention appearances, snail mail drives, new community dev room events, promotional campaigns, and publicity stunts, all to show their support for the reinstatement of Legends 3. And not just normal fans were participating in these revival efforts. 
Japanese singer Reiko Morishita, who sung the opening and ending themes for the original Rockman Dash, stepped in to show her support by remastering her two Legends songs, Another Sun and Your Wind is Blowing. CyberConnect 2 CEO Hiroshi Matsuyama stated in an interview that if given the chance, he'd love for his company to develop a Mega Man Legends 3. Yoshiyuki Fujikawa, the programming director of Legends 3, offered his support via Twitter to all those petitioning for the game's revival. He believed that the message could get through to Capcom with the right amount of feedback from fans, though his tweet was unfortunately deleted later on. Even Keiji Inafune himself voiced his approval of the revival efforts, telling fans, I am now independent, away from Capcom, so as you can tell, I stand in the same position as all of you when it comes to Mega Man Legends 3. I stand beside you, cheering for the same cause and hope. I personally feel grateful for all your love for the title, and I respect your long-lasting passion. I will continue to personally support all your efforts. I thank you all for showing so much love towards my very favorite creation. As a game creator, I promise to continue creating more games that will appeal to all of you moving forward. Before leaving Capcom, Inafune had actually asked his superiors for permission to continue developing Legends 3 under his new company. Capcom, however, rejected his proposal, stating, We have no need to do that. Introducing Legends3.com! Your gateway to making Capcom realize that misleading their fans and canceling a game after months of hype was the biggest mistake they possibly could have made! Things like the Legends Never Die Snail Mail campaign! An attempt to literally flood Capcom's mailboxes with letters and art! What is this strange device? We've gotta do something. Let's head out to Osaka and civilly convince them to change their minds. For once, bring you our role, let's talk to them directly. Tell them what for! There's no way I'm letting that blue boy sit up there and rot! years continued to go by, fans still voiced demand for Legends 3. Some have even taken matters into their own hands by making fan games. The Japanese revival cause, Dash 3 Reboot, produced an 8-bit fan demake of the Legends 3 prototype, with classic 2D controls and a very touching ending. And a Japanese fan named Kobu No. Zero is currently working with his team to produce a 3D homebrew version of Legends 3. While it still remains uncertain whether Capcom will ever revisit this beloved series, fans are not left without hope. Following the announcement of Shenmue 3 at last year's E3, Sony stated in an interview that they were building a list of other cult titles to help with crowdfunding. This has left fans hopeful that Sony could intervene to save Legends in the same way they helped to save Shenmue. Inafune has also claimed on several occasions that he's still very interested in making Legends 3. Even Capcom appears to be listening more to their fans lately. After nine long years, Mega Man Legends 1, The Misadventures of Tron Bon, and Mega Man Legends 2 have finally been released on the North American PSN store, which has opened up new ways for fans to support the series. And fans are certainly taking advantage of this opportunity to demonstrate their demand for Legends. In addition, people who were previously incapable of picking up physical copies of these games, either because they couldn't find them or because the copies they found were too expensive, now have a convenient means of experiencing the Legends titles for the first time. While it's true that things can certainly be better for Legends fans, they could also be a lot worse. The series still has a sizable and passionate fan base that hasn't dwindled over the past 15 years. On the contrary, since the cancellation of Legends 3, it seems to have only increased. Who knows, maybe someday Capcom will recognize all the passion for these games and decide to give Legends 3 another chance. One thing's for sure, with the release of the Legends games on PSN, the fan base is only getting bigger. And the bigger the fan base, the more likely it'll be that Capcom will revisit this series again someday. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Legends Never Die. <laughs>